Where were you when the world stopped turning on that September day? Out in the yard, your wife and children working on some stage in L.A. Did you stand there in shock at the sight of that black smoke rising against that blue sky? Did you shout out in anger and fear for your neighbor? Or did you just sit down and cry? Did you weep for the children who lost their dear loved ones? Pray for the ones who don't know. Did you rejoice for the people who walked from the rubble and sob for the ones left below? Did you burst out in pride for the red, white, and blue? The heroes who died just doing what they do. Did you look up to heaven for some kind of answer and look at yourself and what really matters? I'm just a singer of simple songs. I'm not a real political man. I watch CNN, but I'm not sure I can tell you the difference in Iraq and Iran. I know Jesus and I talk to God And I remember this from when I was young Faith, hope, and love are some good things He gave us And the greatest is love Where were you when the world stopped turning On that September day? Teaching a class full of innocent children Driving down some cold interstate Did you feel guilty cause you're a survivor? In a crowded room did you feel alone? Did you call up your mother and tell her you loved her? Did you dust off that Bible at home? Did you open your eyes and hope it never happened? Close your eyes and not go to sleep. Did you notice the sunset the first time in ages? And speak to some stranger on the street. Did you lay down at night and think of tomorrow? Go out and buy you a gun. Did you turn off that violent whole movie you're watching? Turn on I Love Lucy reruns Did you go to a church And hold hands with some stranger Stand in line and give your own blood Did you just stay home And cling tight to your family Thank God you had somebody to love I'm just a singer of simple songs I'm not a real political man Watch CNN, but I'm not sure I can tell you the difference in our rock and our end. But I know Jesus and I talk to God, and I remember this from when I was young. Faith, hope, and love are some good things He gave us, and the greatest is love. I'm just a singer of simple songs. I'm not a real political man. I watch CNN, but I'm not sure I could tell you the difference in Iraq and Iran. But I know Jesus and I talk to God, and I remember this from when I was young. Faith, hope, and love are some good things He gave us. And the greatest is love. The greatest is love. The greatest is love. Where were you when the world stopped turning? That September day. Seventeen years ago today, I, I thought about it as I got up this morning. I uh, just thought I ought, to, I ought to pay tribute to it. But I was, I was, I was pondering a, a little bit more and thinking about where we are and what's going on in, in America. And 
all the stuff that we talk about here on the show all the time. I was, uh, man, I thought, you know something? America's gotten so much darker. Golly, have we gotten darker since 9 11, 2001. America's gotten so much darker. And uh, it was, if there was any lesson that I learned from 9 1 1 as I look back over the shoulder at it, is opportunity missed. It was an opportunity missed by the church. Remember, remember the, the days immediately after that whole thing happened, the power of pride and we will rebuild and everybody putting bumper sticks on, bumper stickers on their car about we're going to, yeah, and we'll put a boot in your ass. It's the American way. And that stuff is all good and all that patriotism alive and well. And as we were distracted by all that patriotism, the darkness just ca- continued to creep in. And I believe that we are, we are today, 17 years later, today on 9-11-2018. I've had this urgency in me for the last week. I'm, I'm telling you something, something is about to happen. Something's about to happen. This, this darkness and this light, this ever-increasing darkness. Think, think back to 2001. And uh, even though we got slapped in the face like that, the optimism. How, how much racism was there in 2001? And how much LBGTQRS was going on in 2001? And how they used 2001 to manipulate us, manipulate us into the Patriot Act and being searched at airports and giving up our liberties. And think how far we have fallen in 2000, in those 17 years. And the point that I made about the church is when, when 911 hit, people flooded to the church and the church had no answer. The church had no answer. Within about three months, we were right back where we were. All the church had was prosperity gospel, and uh, we fell into the power of pride, and people came to, came to church looking for answers. So I was struck by this other little video I want to play. It's only about four or five minutes uh, as well. But this uh, darkness is, boy, has darkness enveloped this country. In the last 17 years, Jared, go ahead and play this real quickly as well. Left it seems while I was sleeping And the vision that was planted in my brain Still remains within the sound of silence Freeze that a minute, Jared. Folks, as you, as you listen to this, I want you to think spiritual, okay? I don't want you to think natural. I want you to think about how, hello, darkness, my old friend, the dark side, the demonic side, and how we have embraced it and huddle up to it. Hello, darkness, my old friend, come to talk with you again. There's a vision. There it is. The vision's called the battleground of the mind. Keep going, there. In restless dreams, I walked alone. Streets of cobblestone Neath the halo of a street lamp I turn my color to the cold and damp When my eyes were stemmed By the flash of a neon light That split Stop. 
some deep spiritual uh, connections you can make in that song and it was the silence of the american church over the last 17 years that silence spoke so many volumes and here we are today 17 years later and uh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy uh reaction coach this is yeah. this is the profound day my son and i as I do every morning, my Bible reading, and many won't believe me, but I always, I'll turn on the news and I'll let it play as I'm reading the word just to see what the weather is. I was reading literally when I saw the second plane hit the tower. I was reading Revelations chapter 18. Mm. Most people won't believe it, but I was reading that passage of scripture when it cried out and saying, Babylon the great has fallen and it has become the habitation of devils and every foul spirit and cage of every unclean, hateful bird. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. And it's, it's fallen because again, we missed it. We missed that time of visitation. Now we know that the Lord is gracious. We know that his mercy endures forever. But we have to also understand that his judgment will come. It's his promise. Mercy follows judgment. The judgment of God has to come upon America. And, uh, you know, this idea that Donald Trump can make America great again. Yeah, he might, be, he might be able to put it back. But we're in the same situation that we were in 17 years ago. Donald Trump, President Trump, was calling for the church to arise, and the church will not arise. The church will not arise. And uh, uh, I don't know whether it's, I don't know whether that too also is the judgment of God. I got some good stuff for you. I don't want to sit here and, and get all emotional about nine one one. I get more emotional about the fact that the church has become silent. The sound of the silence from the church about what's going on in the world and our ability to stand up and push back and take it back and fight back is gone from the church. It's gone. Hey, Coach, I don't know. You have any? It's it's gone for a reason. It's gone because we have we have uh, six corporations in charge of our news. Six corporations with 147 interlocking boards of directors. We are never going to learn anything from those guys that they they don't want us to know. Well, Vinny, we know that. See, we know that. We under we understand all that. But why? Why does the church? How can a pastor stand in his pulpit and not teach his people what's going on? How how can a, any man of God stand in there and not give warning to the people of what's going on? And I, I was thinking, can can you imagine? I hate to come back to this. Can you imagine if the church got as pissed off? I'm sorry, the church got as pissed off about abortion as they do Colin Kaepernick. Can you imagine? Off. Can you imagine the outrage if the church got outraged? About the slaughter of unborn children? Ah, we don't care. This is pissed off. It's ridiculous. But the problem is their God is mammon. That's why. Not my That's God. Why. It's, it's not my God. Not and my God. Doctor, it's not, not my God. God. It's not your God. Amen. 
Somebody I else commented. I uh, rewrote that song called Now the Sin of Silence. On the Sin of Silence, Dale. I heard you sing that one. The Sin of Silence. Sin of Silence. And so there'll be 911 memorials everywhere, and we'll just pass it off just like, you know, I, I would imagine Dale, what? Two of your children maybe weren't born. Well, I guess David would have been born. You had little, little kids. Think about the life that has swept by us over the last 17 years. Think about that. And what's going to be like in 17 years from now if the rapture doesn't come? What's it going to be like? When are we going to learn? When are we going to look around and learn? Somebody come on in here. I got, I got a lot of stuff for you today. I just got to get this out. This, the, here's an analogy about time and how it passes us by. I saw this little meme that said, if your child was starting kindergarten when Katrina hit, he is now starting college. Is that something? Huh? And lo and behold, we got this big hurricane coming up there towards Larry and those guys up there. And yes, we're pre-staging to get ready to see if we have to run down there and how. Here's my question. Hey, church. My mom told me this. Nah, maybe she didn't. I could be lying. No wide pro wise proverb. Announce prevention for the pound of cure. Why is a church in the mode where they want to repair broken people rather than keeping people from being broken? How did we ever fall in? How, how, did, how did the church become a hospital for wounded saints? How the heck did that happen to us? The church triumphant, the church victorious. It would be one thing if the wounded people were bandaging up or the people out on the front lines getting uh, beaten to uh, pulp out on the front line. That would be one thing. No, no, but we're, we're trying to uh, bandage wounded people with self-inflicted freaking wounds. Sitting around telling each other how brave we are. Oh, we're so brave. Oh, you're so uh, devil's after you. You're so brave. And we're going to wake up. It's going to be 17 years from now. And what are we? what is it going to be? I don't, I don't, I don't even know. Coach, you know, you mentioned the hurricane. I remember, gosh, it's been a lot of years ago now, a fellow by the name of Pat Robertson. It made national news. Boy, he prayed the hurricane would miss Virginia, would miss the, uh, no Fort Virginia, Hampton, whatever, wherever his headquarters is area. Right. And it, it, it missed, it went on up north and it hit up uh, New York or somewhere. But you know what? There's a very teachable moment here as, as we have a thousand miles off from a shore, a uh, category four hurricane. I am sure there are, quote, Christians praying all up and down these Carolina coasts that the hurricane will miss them. Will miss them. Now, when you pray that a hurricane will, will miss me, you're praying that it will hit somebody else. Yep. Now, Here's the teachable moment. If God controls the weather, and he can, I don't know that he always does, but he can. He can. Jesus calmed that storm on the Sea of Galilee. If God controls all the weather all the time, then he has a purpose and a reason for where he is sending this hurricane. Now, who, excuse my, I'm not, no, don't excuse my French. Who the hell thinks they know better than God and try to tell God where to send a hurricane? No, let's pray the way God taught us to, the way Jesus by the Holy Spirit taught us. Let's pray for God's will to be done. You know, my son called and he said, what are you doing in a hurricane? I said, I'm staying right where I'm at. He said, That's not wise. I says, I don't care if you think it's wise or not. I says, I've lived in a tent before. I can live in a tent again. <laughs> Amen. See, because the, the Bible teaches us that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. You know the story of the Tower of Siloam? Boy, Jared, that would be a good scripture if you can pull that up there. Tower, the Tower. Jared's got a, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Jared, I'm just going with the flow here. Tower of Siloam, S-I-L-O-A-M, uh, I believe, Tower of Siloam. <clears throat> it's S-I, I believe, S-I. Yeah, there it is. S L I. Yep. Okay. Um, Luke Luke thirteen four. Luke three, and this is exactly what Larry is alluding to here. Luke thirteen four. Start with one, Jared. Start with verse one. Luke thirteen. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. 
Wow, witnesses to 911. <laughs> Jesus has some witnesses to 911, doesn't he? Right there. I said, Lord, why why did that happen? Why did that happen to New York? Lord, why did you let that happen? Lord, why did you let that hurricane come blowing in here? Why, Lord, I pray every day for you. Uh, we give our life. Why would you let this happen? Lord, why would you let Rusty Thomas's son die? And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered so much? He said, do you guys think this is happening because they're righteous or unrighteous? Do you think that's what it is? He says, what's wrong with you guys? I tell you, no. But except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. And of those 18 upon whom that tower in Siloam fell, the tower fell and it killed 18 people, fell on top of them. He said, of those 18 upon whom that tower fell and slew them, do you think that they were sinners? They were bigger sinners than everybody else. What's wrong with you guys? He said, tell you, no. Unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. And Larry is exactly right. When I pray, Lord, please don't let this hurricane hit us. You're, you're praying it on somebody else. <laughs> Unless we could get it to blow up and dissipate and be gone, that would, that would be a good prayer. But otherwise, you're, you're praying that thing on top of somebody else. Oh, my goodness. Anybody else? Because I'm going to shift gears here. Man. I got some, some stuff to show you. I, I feel obligated to show. Anybody else want to jump in? We got, we got about 40 people in here today. Some of you probably still trying to get in. Hey, good news. Good news. I'm banned on Facebook. Got another 30-day ban on Facebook. I, I'm really to the point I'm about ready to shut it down anyway. And they banned me on something that was uh, three and a half years old. Uh, I put an appeal in. But so if you're trying to reach me on Facebook, forget about it. Because I ain't there. I ain't there. You're a repeat it, offender for the king, bro. I am a repeat offender four years ago, right? So yeah. what, what I said and did reverberates throughout time and eternity. So well, uh, well, Dave, uh, well, look four at years it. ago is true and good anyway. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It was good. I was going to say, Dave, the way I look at it is this. They're having to go that far back to find something to ban you on. Maybe we're not over the target. Well, get back yeah, on there. they just haven't caught, they just haven't caught up with the yet, Chad. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. By the way, Chad's wife did a new video. I, I should have pulled that up this morning. Uh, she, she did a good good little video. Yeah, she started her own video channel. And Michael, uh, Mike, uh, Pastor Mike Spalding had his first show last night. I was an honor to be guest on his first show last night. And he's going to his show is going to be every Monday night at six o'clock. And it was good. And uh, uh, yeah, th there's the Estes Ranch on on uh, YouTube. I got something I want to say to YouTube as well. That, that's OK. See, so I was worried about uh, this morning playing those two videos. But they would ban me. But what the heck? Used to that anyway. All right. Hey, listen, I just feel obligated. To tell you the truth. OK. So I'm going to show you some stuff right now that I think you need to be aware of. Can we go, Jared? I know we do. I know we use this verse a lot. I know we use it a lot, but I, I feel that we need to do it. Let's go to Psalm 2. Psalm 2. Because I want you all. Hey, sometimes you got to, uh, in practice, we kept running the same play over and over and over and over and over. Till everybody got it. Just run it over and over and over. We call it signal drill. Just run it over and over and over and over and over so that it becomes muscle memory, okay? So I'm trying to give you some muscle memory here to understand it. If you think that what happened on 911 was the truth. Now, we know that's not true. Come on. You're a grown-up, aren't you? They could See, they couldn't pull that off on us today. Too many cell phones, internets, uh, too many people on the internet. So they couldn't, they couldn't pull off those phony planes. They, they couldn't do that to us today. They couldn't. And if you're sitting in your house and you believe the 911 story, well, God bless you. <laughs> but it's not the 911 story that I'm worried about. It's the 2018 story that I'm worried about and what's going on around us. And because what happened on 911, by the way, also on the tip of what happened to John F. Kennedy, on the followed on down through a lot of these, what we would call false flags all across America. There's very, very deep, dark, sinister people in control of our government. I just, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. 
And no, I'm not going to put my tinfoil hat on because it isn't tinfoil hat. It's the truth. Maybe I ought to put, maybe I ought to get a shirt made for that. The truth sounds like tinfoil. That'd be one to wear, wouldn't it? The truth sounds like tinfoil. It ain't tinfoil. It isn't. So we've had 17 years of lies of the Patriot Act and is Islam and all, all of it, right? All of it. And isn't it amazing how they just kind of pull out a, a boogeyman here when they need one and a boogeyman here when they need one? And we don't want to believe it because most of us in our hearts are not that wicked, not that evil. But we're dealing with evil people. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointing. So there is a spiritual war going on against the Lord, first and foremost, and against those of us who carry the name of Christ. We're, we're his anointed. The battle is the seed of the serpent against the seed of the woman. And sadly, I hate to tell you this, we are in an occupied nation. Our government has been seized by dark forces. You can believe it or you cannot believe it. I don't, I don't care. I don't, I don't care. And it's coming to some type of crescendo. Now, we're going here in the next, I don't know, I'm not going to put a timeline. But he, something big is about, the, I'm, I just feel it deep in my bones, something big. Is about to happen. And I just have an urgency in my heart of 911 and the fact that it's an anniversary and how easy it would be for them to do something and blame it on whoever they want to blame it on. The, the, the government media complex. So I got some stuff I want to share with you because the let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. We don't understand. Vinny tapped into it there at the beginning. How, how the media's controlled Alex Jones. Did you know Alex Jones now, they won't even have his own app? He can't even have his own app. The Alex Jones app. Now they won't let him have his own app. What's going on? Something's going on because the kings of this world do not want any outlet of truth because what they know is coming down the pike is not good. Y'all with me? <clears throat> Hey, Jared, you're kind of, I know you're thinking and you're bouncing around. So am I. That's where, where my mind is. But I got some very, I got some things I got to show you that you can laugh about Alex Jones. You can laugh about QAnon. You can laugh about, laugh about all that stuff I want to. But I got some stuff that I believe you, we need to see. Okay. Now, QAnon, I'm going to try to do this in a way that's going to make, do you guys know what the, uh, the FISA report is? Could anybody give me, uh, Remember, the lie, the seed of the serpent, the seed of the woman. Based on lies, the devil's a liar. Doesn't just tell lies, he is a liar. He's a liar from the beginning. The devil operates on lies. So if I was going to be the devil's team and I was going to begin to continue to do what I do, how would I do it? I would do, do it through lies and deception. That's how the devil works. And that's why when yeah. fake news and Fake media and fake. It is. It's fake. It's lies. It's not fake. It's lies. See, they are liars. They, they are their father, the devil, and the works of their father they will do. Folks, make a spiritual connection with what's going on. If, if the devil could do anything, he would want to destroy Christian America. That would have to be one of his crown jewels. Not Israel, Christian America. That if he, if he, if the devil could destroy the beacon of liberty that America once was, what a victory that would be. And I don't, I don't think the Lord's going to let it happen. But I believe that the battle that's being at, is beginning to culminate in front of us is something that we need to be aware of. Are you with me? Okay, now I'm going to take you through a series of slides. You can believe them or you cannot believe them. You can turn them off. You can go away. But when the show's over, I'm going to say I warned you. Okay? Jerry, let's go to slide number one. Now, folks, this was QAnon yesterday. And I don't know if you can see it on your screen. September 10th, 2018, at 329 Eastern Standard Time, QAnon released this meme. And what does it say? Buckle up, buttercups. It's about to get bumpy. So that tells me that something is getting ready to happen. Now, you don't you could say, well, I don't believe Q. I don't, I don't believe it. Okay, that's you don't have to. Buckle up, buttercups. It's about to get bumpy. So the FISA report, you guys know what the FISA report is? Hey, Absolutely, yes. brother. Yeah. It's the Foreign Intelligence Civil uh, Surveillance Act. 
Yeah, that's right. Where they can spy on supposed to be foreign, foreign intelligence, right? They're supposed and it was to be used by the Democrat Ted Kennedy. That that right yeah. there is harrowing. <laughs> well, there's a there's that uh, the uh, uh, the kings of this earth conspired against the Lord and His anointed. Right there, it is right. Well, what was the what was the Pfizer report about? What what was the purpose of the Pfizer report? Does can anybody succinctly tell us that? What was it about? There's a psyop. There was a psyop to uh, to speak do, English, Vinny. Speak it. English. What does that mean? Uh, Okay, it was a psychological operation to destabilize the Trump administration. Right. The whole, the whole thing's a setup from beginning to end. That's what so people FISA, need to... If I understand that there's a FISA court, a federal intelligence uh, surveillance. There's a court where they have to take evidence if they want to do spying on bin Laden or they want to do spying on, on a foreign, foreign people. They go to the FISA court and they get the approval from the FISA court to spy on foreign agents. So they, they, they made up this fake dossier. We've all heard all about this, right? They took it to the FISA court and the FISA court gave them the right to be able to spy on Donald Trump based on a phony FISA. You, you with me out there, folks? Are y'all following me? So the evidence that they took and presented to the FISA judges was phony. They knew it was phony and they presented it anyway. Their plan was they thought Hillary Clinton was going to win. They were going to blow Trump out of the water with all these fake accusations. Wasn't going to be any way he could defend himself. They had Comey, they had Mueller, they had Rosenstein, they had Stroke, they had all their people in high places. And they were going to do whatever they could to undermine the Trump administration. Because why? Like it or not, Trump may be part of a, uh, a cabal. He may be part of a uh, new world order. He may be, I don't know, but he isn't part of that one. He's not a part of that one, all right? And so we see this clashing taking place. And over the last 18 months, investigation, investigation, investigation into Trump, all this stuff, trying to do everything they can to try to hook Trump up. But the whole thing began with a phony FISA report. Anybody not following what I'm telling you? I'm going to show, I'm going to show you some stuff here. Anybody following it? So now through the release of documents and things that we've been getting, although the FBI hasn't come clean with all of the documents, we're finding out that uh, thing was phony and it knows phony. Oh, evidence now shows it's phony. So hang on a second, Jared, because we've got it up on the screen. See, the, uh, the FISA document, the FISA document is top secret. Well, not top secret, but classified. And if we could see the FISA documents, we would see the phony stuff that they put in it. Who signed off on it? Who was behind it? All of this stuff. If the if Trump were to declassify the FISA document, stay with me, the folks. I understand we want to talk about the Bible. I'm trying to show you that the things that are spoken of in this book are playing out right before us. So rumor has it that Trump's about to release the FISA declassify. The FISA report. When he declassifies the FISA report, we're all going to see what was done. And when we all see what was done, it is going to be earth shaking. This is this is number two. Q dropped this yesterday, 1241 Eastern Standard Time. He says the declassification of FISA will initiate the resignation recusal and or removal of Rod Rosenstein. The declassification of FISA will initiate the awareness that all signers will be under investigation. By the way, put in there, currently. They're already under investigation. But when the FISA document comes out, people are going to see why they're under investigation. The declassification of FISA will factually demonstrate without argument the U.S. government under Barack Hussein knowingly presented false evidence to a FISA court in an effort to obtain legal U.S. intelligence umbrella, a surveillance of the POTUS for the sole purpose of influencing the 2016 election of the presidency. Q says, if this thing is declassified, by the way, so does Jim Jordan. 
So does uh, uh, Nunez. So does uh, Mark Meadows. They all say the same thing. Release the document. This thing's over. Just declassify this document and this thing's over. Hmm. How about this? The surveillance of the POTUS, it says identified target in the, po in the class, in the class, uh, in the FISA thing. The surveillance of the POTUS was the target that they, that President Trump is who they targeted. For the sole purpose of influencing the 2000 election of the presidency, not Russia, but Obama and Hillary Clinton projection. That's what this FISA is going to show. Safeguards against possible loss of power. They put firewalls into place. They're going to show you the firewalls, how Rosenstein had done this and Mueller had done this and Comey had done this to make sure that if something happened, they were they had a firewall in every place. Use of back channel surveillance, spy insertion, bodies one, two, and five. That, that identifies who they are. The United Kingdom and Australia are involved with it, activated under direct uh, uh, direct uh, orders of Brennan, the uh, director Clapper, with regulation updates, live streaming with Hussein, non-oval coordination, non-oval office. In other words, they have a situation room that the president himself was organizing and seeing all this go forth. They have it. It's in the FISA report. It's in there. They have evidence of it. Trump has to declassify it. And Q says yesterday that the FISA, the full FISA thing brings down the House. And he puts WH, White House. What's going to be released is going to go to the top of the Obama administration, the Obama himself. Now, you could say, no, I don't believe that. OK, I'm just I'm just your friendly cub reporter here. This is stuff all came out yesterday. So here's here's another thing yesterday. All you got to do is do a little Google. And this went out. Uh, this went out on nine seven. This was a couple of days before. It says. Uh, RE, review is important. Talking about the documents now, who signed them? Who signed page 380? Who signed page 389? Who signed page 390? Who signed page 391? Who signed page 392? Well, Andrew McCabe, 389. Rosenstein, 391. Dana Buente, 271. James Comey, 269. Sally Yates. They knowingly used false intelligence. Think HRC, Hillary Rodden Clinton. She paid for it for the fake dossier. Think Steele, B.O., that's Barack Obama, post FBI firing intel collection. Think DOJ and FBI classified leaks to fake news. Insert that fake news into the FISA application to get new sources so they can get a new update. Think PDB placement by Brennan to authenticate sources credible. Think Barack Obama, Wiseman, regular updates, Steele. Firewall, Mueller, and think about their oath. I declare under penalty of perjury that the foregoing information regarding Carter W. Page is true and correct. Who signed it? The declassification of these documents is going to show us. So let me take you up a little trip. This is that next one, Jared. This is a little trip down memory lane. There are more of these. But this gives you a little bit of the back history. Remember, the kings of this earth have set themselves up and they're conspiring against the Lord and his anointed. The in intentional destruction of Christian America is what we're talking about here. Right? Not Republican, not Democrat, not liberal, not conservative, not any of those games that they've been playing with us. They want us, they want white guys fighting with black guys. They want old people fighting with young people. They want college people fighting with uh, hill jacks. They want all kinds of fighting going on. So everybody misses exactly. The, the, what's happening? Okay, so military patriots in the military intelligence knew about the deep state's plan to sabotage Trump, and they created a counter plan. Here's my guess of what the plan looks like. Military intelligence anticipates and confirms through signal intelligence the surveillance of Donald Trump by foreign and domestic agencies. The military intelligence picks this up. The FBI launches a counterintelligence investigation which predictably leads to the appointment of a special counsel. That was all made up. That was a FISA. FISA. Military intel advises Trump, and they tell him, play along with their game. Let them think they're running the show. 
Let them run their operation and don't interfere. We'll observe it all. We'll gather all the evidence. And when the time is right, we'll hold military tribunals to deal with it. Did we talk about that yesterday? Hmm. Rosenstein is appointed deputy AG and predictably fires Comey and appoints Mueller as special counsel. Since Sessions is recused and held in check, the deep state believes they have all their people in place to take down Trump. This is going to come out of this vice He We did classify it. Mueller indicts the well-known lobbyist and money launderer Paul Manafort. The cabal thinks everything is gone according to plan. But along the way, the messages of Lisa Page and Peter Stroke are mysteriously made public. And their corruption is exposed. They're removed from Mueller's team and forced to co cooperate with Inspector General Horowitz's investigation. There's two of them out of commission. General Flynn pleads guilty to lying to the FBI. The deep state feels a little bit better. Then acting director McCabe is fired and referred for criminal prosecution. Chief counsel James Baker is nailed and he's gone. Then FBI chief of staff Ray Bickey is gone. And suddenly over the next few months, the seventh floor is cleaned out and no one asks why. See, they've been working behind the scenes all this time. We don't think anything's going on. Trump keeps the deep state's hopes up by blasting Jeff Sessions a few times a month for refusing to help him out. Witch hunt. Trump's setting him up. Rather than do what his enemies expect and appoint a second special counsel to investigate the swamp, Sessions secretly tasks a U.S. attorney in deep red state territory to bring prosecution. And although Mueller's investigation leaks like a sieve, nothing is ever heard Huber's investigation. The fact causes everyone to think nothing is happening, and that's exactly how military intelligence wants it. The DOJ, FBI, CIA, and State Department undergo wholesale cleaning. This is going on. It's been going on, draining the swamp. We don't see it. We, this is going on behind the scenes. Leakers are found and removed from the White House. Trump and McConnell appoint new circuit judges at a record place but few seem to notice. To corrupt politicians and deep state actors, it becomes more apparent every day that things are not going according to their plan. Trump should have been gone by now. Two months left before the midterms, and he's still in office? What happened to Mueller time? And Congress is moving fast to declassify to make public documents that expose the deep state's plan to throw in an election and impeach a duly elected president without pulse. Sleeper cells planted inside the government are activated and they begin their plan of disrupting the Trump administration. We're seeing it, right? Bob Woodward and uh, this spy inside. This, this is all just military intelligence continues to observe and compiling evidence that will be used to prosecute bad actor that's the plan boys that's what's going on so here's what i'm trying to make all the only reason i'm doing this is the old shth right the old when the blank hits the fan the blank's about to hit the fan because the blank is about to hit the fan and those who thought they were in control now realizing they're not in control. They're like a caged, rat, a caged uh, lion. They're going to fight like we ain't never seen. That's why I tried to, that's why I said yesterday, get some food, get, get some, get something. That's, something's about to happen. Somebody come on in here and straighten me out. Now you're looking pretty straight there, coach. No need to straighten that out. But I, I, I think that I, we talked about, uh, you know, the Jeff Sessions things, you know, why is he not? And I, and cause I know Trump, Trump would be riding him like a cult from the beginning. He wouldn't let up. I, we, I concurred with a, one of the coaches on our football team, the homeschool saints. He works for the government FBI 16 years. We say the same thing. He said, Sessions is doing stuff that we have no idea of. Yeah. And, and you know, Dale, I saw, I saw a, a Q and on meme. I couldn't find it this morning. And posted yesterday, 
and it was a picture of 911. And the caption said, we won't let them get away with it. So the, the point that I'm trying to make is, uh, I was listening to Dave Jandy yesterday, or I can't remember, uh, somebody else. I, I listened to a lot of them. And uh, see, it's, it's, about the, it's about the restoration of law, not the restoration of law. America is lawless. Our government is lawless. And so what, uh, what we see happening before us is the restoration of law. Psalm 2, Jared, to go back to Psalm 2. You say, well, Trump's not a Christian. Listen, you don't have to be a Christian for God's will to be done. You don't have to be a Christian for God to use you. Trump doesn't have to be a Christian for the Lord to use you. What? Let us break the bands asunder and cast away their cords from us because he that's sitting in the heavens is laughing at what they're trying to do. They, then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet, I, yet have I set my king upon my holy hill Zion, and I will declare the great decree the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I'll give you the heathen of thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth the possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, and thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Why did Lindsey Graham talk about military tribunal? Come on, I've spoken, I've talked enough. Somebody come in. I got more stuff. Somebody come on in here. Didn't God use King Xerxes? And what about when Nehemiah rebuilt the wall? Did he not go to the king and the king released all the material and all the letters that he needed to go through the woods and not be? God does use them. So what's Doesn't the it? message for the church? What's the what's the what 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 are we to do? What are we? First of all, we're not to be ignorant of his devices. We're not to be caught flat footed. We're not to be caught with our lamps not uh, not filled. We're not to be we're not to be surprised. But see, the, the, where the church is right now, if you talk about this to the normal Christian, they're going to be thinking, well, the rapture is coming. Jesus is coming. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. But man, there's going to be some crazy stuff that's going to happen before that, before that occurs. And the message for the church, Coach, the first message is figure out who the church is and stop including those who aren't. Well, Larry, I'd, I'll say this is the same message that Coach almost opened up with in the parable of the scripture there, the walls falling. He says, and you better repent too, or you're going to perish likewise also. It's coming to all of us, brothers. Okay, so I'm going to make another connection. Jared, go to Genesis 18 and 19. Genesis 18 19. Here's what I think. This is a connection that I'm going to make, and you guys can think of it what you want to think of it. I, I, don't, I really don't care. I guess I do, but... Hey, Coach. Yeah. Real quick before you go there, you know what uh, Trump uh, declared September as? National uh, uh, Preparedness yeah. Month. Yeah, National Preparedness Month. Uh, why is that? And I could take you back to the FISA, to the executive order back in last December. We talked about that yesterday. This is National Preparedness Month. And, you know, now it's easy for him to say we need to be prepared because there's hurricanes and there's earthquakes. So it makes sense to be prepared. But I think there's a hurricane coming like we have never seen. <laughs> That's what I that's what I think is going on. So here's a connection that I want to make to you. The Lord is very, very, very displeased with us and what we've permitted to happen to our children. Very, very permit, very, very angry about it. Not only the uh, abortion issue, but the pedophilia that we've turned a blind eye to, right? The miseducation. Of our children, not the uneducation, the miseducation, the teaching of our children, secular lies, things that fly directly in the face of God, removing from our children the blessings of God, the knowledge of God, the word of God. God, he said, suffer the little ones to come unto me, for thus is, thus is the kingdom of heaven. You guys remember this? Remember this? He said, if you do this and you mislead one of these little ones who believe in me, It'd be better for you if they put a millstone around your neck and threw you into the deepest part of the ocean than to even mislead one of these little ones. Remember, hey, what I said? Remember hang on a second. Remember when I said Psalm 127? The fruit of the womb is his reward. Those are his kids. Those are his children that are being, being stolen. And how lackluster and, and uh, apathetic we are towards what's happening to our children. Go ahead, Vinny. Hey, you know, you know my initiative, uh, children are not sex toys, right? Yes. So 
shouldn't 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 there be a law enacted that if you masquerade as a rescuer of children and say you prey on them that there's a special penalty for you? Like death, maybe. Hey, hey, listen. Like death, maybe, right? Hey, folks. Will life, you wake right? up? Will you wake up here a minute? The pedophiles have invaded the church. They're right in the church. They're right in the schools. And what's the response? Not of the government. What's the response of the church? Remember this, folks, that the judgment that's going to come is going to come upon God's people. We're the one that are going to be under judgment. The, those others, well, they're lost. They got judgment coming too. Right. But we're going to be held on account for every deed we did. We're going to be held on to account. Judgment's coming, and it ain't going to be pretty. Amen, brother. I'm not a doom or gloomer. Those who listen to me, no, no doom or gloom, right? I, I want to show you something. This is the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. And, you know, we focus in on, on sodomy, and people, people say, oh, he's a closet. He's a closet sodomite. That's all he ever talks about. Why is that? It's because the children are created in the image of God. And the sodomites are doing everything they can to pervert the image of God. God can't you guys see this? These are God's little image bearers. Can't we understand and see what's going on? And I'm, uh, we don't have to read this, Jared, because it doesn't look like I'm going to have time. The story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Here's, here's what I want you to, here's what I want you to get to get a uh, garner from the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Because as we read the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, we find out that, oh, Jared, we got to go there. I'm sorry, man. You got to go there. They got to see it. Uh, Jared, scroll on down. Uh, no, going down is there. No, not there. 11, 12. Uh, ten, uh there's, there's laugh, there's stuff. And Lord said to Sarah, no, uh, uh, and the Lord said, bah, bah. and there we are. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gore is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it. Which is coming to me, and if not, I'm I'm, I'm gonna know. <laughs> he said, "I'm gonna go down and peek at peek this thing out a little bit." The men turned their faces from thence, and they went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord, and Abraham said, "Please, Lord, if it's huh, Lord, don't destroy it. If there's a right, if the righteous people there, don't destroy them." And he said, "Okay, if there's fifty, we know that story." He says, "Okay, if you find fifty, keep going, Jared." He said, "Okay, Lord, what if, what if I can't find fifty, Lord? What if I can only find uh, 20? I'm like, okay, okay, if you can only find twenty, okay, Lord, what if I can only find ten? He says, "Okay, if you can find ten, I won't destroy it for the ten's sake." The Lord went away, and as soon as he left communion with Abraham, and Abraham thought he's at peace. And then look at this, and there came two angels to Sodom at, at evening, and. Ooh, and they, and Lot sat them in the gate of Sodom, and Lot seeing them rise up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. I gotta hurry. He said, Behold now, my lords, turn turn in, I pray, into your servant's house and tarry all night and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night and press on greatly. Before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed around the house, both old and young, and all the people from every quarter. And they called on to Lot and said unto him, Where are the men that came to visit you? We want to have sex with them. A lot went out to the door and said, no, no, don't, don't take my daughters. Take my daughters. Don't take them. They said, no, get back. We want those men. This one fellow came to sojourn. He needs to be a judge. Yada, yada. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house with them. And they shut the door. And they smote the men that were outside the door with blindness. They worried themselves at the door. The men said unto Lot, hast thou any other, anyone in here? The son-in-law, sons, any the daughters? But we will destroy this place because the city of them is waxing great and Lot escapes. He gets out of there. He doesn't let him have it, but I want you to watch something. Mm. Remember Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the wife of his, uh, the, the hand of his wife and held out the daughters, two daughters, the Lord be merciful unto them. It came to pass and when they brought them, they're leaving out of town and what happens? I'm running out of time. They're running out of time. What happens to Lot's wife? She looks back. She looks back. The drawl of the world. That's a picture of the church. The drawl of the world. The Lord said, don't look back. Don't look back. And she looked back and what happened? There it is. But his wife looked back from behind him. Drawn. Drawn to the world. She became a pillar of salt. You see, Lot's wife became in her death what she refused to be in her life. 
we were called, all of us called to be salt. And she had the opportunity to be salt and she wouldn't do it. She mixed in. She loved the world. She loved everything she had. And so when the lot said, come on, sweetheart, we got to get out of here. She didn't want to follow the Lord hard. She wanted to sort of follow the Lord, but she wanted to stay back there. She wanted to stay back there and be part of it. A lot says, you can't do it. Don't look back. Let that go. And she looked back one last time and boom. Remember Lot's wife, <laughs> Jesus said, 1,800 years later, remember his wife? <laughs> Why? Because she became in her death what she never was in her life. And when we think of her today, when you mention Lot's wife, everybody knows that she became a useless pillar of salt. I don't know how to wrap this up, really. I'm not here to well, give Dave, you. I just want to interject. Are you saying that God meant what he said when he said, don't look back? Uh, evidently. Think that his, it, didn't, it didn't offer any any terms of, uh, what you call yeah. it? Oh, it went blank. No compromise, no compromise man. There was no compromise. Yeah, that's right. He meant what he said. And that's, that's exactly right. what he means. And so here we are, 17 years removed from 911, and we're just looking back. We're just looking back. Also, Dave, I wanted to say that some of the things on this uh, Q report, when it says B.O., it is not necessarily Barack Obama. Sometimes okay. it's Benjamin Orr. All right. So it just depends on the circumstances on uh, what it is. But right. Or body. Or body. Uh, hey. Point being this. Something, if something isn't coming down, QAnon's a liar. And I think something's coming down. Not and I think it's going to come down. I think there's a significance to 911. What if that, what if he declassifies that report today? You know, not looking back kind of reinforces that the lady broke the alabaster flask, doesn't it? Anyway, you know, listening to you, to your show today, I started reading the seven letters to the churches in Revelation, and people have tried. Some people, not 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 everybody, but some people have tried to make me feel like I'm really, really just on a holier thou pillar because I I uh, call that those things, most of those things, calling themselves churches, satanic social clubs. But I just want to read a couple of things that were in those letters uh, to the church at Smyrna. It says, I know thy works and tribulations and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Sounds like a satanic social club to me back in those days. And then to the church in Philadelphia, the one church that he didn't have anything negative to say about, he said, behold, well, there was another one too, but behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not. See, both cases, synagogue of Satan, those satanic social clubs are a bunch of people claiming to be of God and they're not. And that's yeah, the same thing that's going on now. And it's going on right now because those who are standing in the pulpit will not call out lies. They will not call out lies because why? They keep Good looking bit, back. Bit. They keep looking back. If I tell the truth, oh, look what I'm going to give up if I tell the truth. I, oh, isn't there some other way, Lord? Can we be open and tolerant and embracing? Isn't there some other way, Lord? Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Look out for your this. redemption our redemption hey. draw tonight. Hey, hey. hey coach. God yes. is from God. He said, come, let's reason together. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, though your sins are scarlet red. <laughs> right? That's his reasoning. You need to repent. Uh, hey, Jared, or uh, 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 Dale, when he comes back, brother, he'll ride on a white horse. And in righteousness, he's going to judge. He's going to make war. And I want to tell you this. We don't like hearing this. The judgment of God is falling on his people. The reprobates, are, they're, they're gone. They're lost. We know what's going on with them. But the judgment of God is falling upon those of us who carry the name of Christ. God bless you. Buckle up. See you tomorrow.